Yo, 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 and we are here. And we are so unprepared. Uh, good morning and welcome to another episode of Wake and Pack People on a Tuesday morning, man. Um, I know nothing happens quickly around here, but this may be a quick stream. So unprepared today, but I got a like I got a lot of shit to do today before I get back home. Um, I started earlier this morning, this morning real early, but couldn't finish it. So I'm gonna have to be out here, but I cannot find a lighter right now, which is a shame. Uh, so let's see who's in the damn building. Shout out to my boy TR. Oh yes, we gonna chop it up a little bit. Um, this was gonna be like a media, you know, sucks 4.0, 5.0, but I'm not even gonna give them the credit. This is the same people from heavy.com. Please, you guys. Take it with a grain of salt, anything you read from heavy.com, like because it is a foregone conclusion that J Love is going to get the big money, big bag at the latest during the season. You know, the Packers like to do that. Maybe they just like to keep a player on edge for the first couple of weeks, right? But in this particular situation, I think we need to just give him the money as soon as possible. He's already went through some of the mental mind games emotional things that goes on with being a backup quarterback and you have a hall of fame quarterback you know aaron aaron Rodgers had to learn and he learned from farvey whether farvey wanted to teach him or not he still learned uh it does seem like aaron Rodgers helped love more than farvey helped rogers which we do appreciate he can't be a complicated fella but he's also a reasonable fella which is a reason i would not have an issue with him being vice president. He would definitely get my vote. I mean, I don't know who you guys, never mind. I ain't gonna get political. Shout out to my boy Zane Strong. Right, yeah, let's let's just say that. It's like, y'all, like, why is y'all making up some mumbo jumbo shit? But we this ain't even about heavy.com. What I'm gonna do is flip-flop it and segue into this to what have you guys seen? I need to know, Waking Packers. What are some of the attributes? What have you seen? It makes you comfortable with the Packers organization giving love this mass, huge amount of money pretty soon. Give me a quality that you feel okay giving them this money. You know, I can run off a few of mine. You know, he can make every throw. Been through real life, real deal life shit. So when you're on the field and it's down said, huh, it could be third and forever, pressure situation whenever. But when you became the man of your house at age 14, that's a different kind of pressure, you know, and it's all girls around. So just just in case hey, if an intruder were to try to come in or if anything's happened, you guys are all at a family dinner. Somebody disrespects. The son is the one who's going to go out there and do something. So Jay Love took over that after his father passed. He can make every throw. And then again, what hasn't he done? The only thing he hasn't done was done it again. So that's what we're waiting for. Shout out to my boy, Joe. And I told you I was so unprepared. I don't even have a lighter, bro. I was a little late because I was looking for a lighter. How can 420 HPOV Boulevard have no lighters? None. I can't find any. And I'm not about to go to the car right now, so I'm going to do a getaway. I'm going I'm to light my shit on the stove. So, And now I don't even know where my bowl is. For sure. They do that, and then, you know, they also do the mid-season kind of signing. They did that with Kenny Clark way back when. They did that with a couple of Rashawn, you know, close to the beginning, toward the middle of the season, just give them the big bag. You know what I'm saying? So, but again, players don't like to, you know, be on edge. Give them the money so they could go out there and play. When you ain't get your money yet, you, you, you're not really playing right. And if you ain't playing 100%, that's the way you get injured, you know? Hey, TR, and it's a damn shame, TR. Every single one of them lighters you sent is gone. And it's crazy because with big lighters, they are so good and so great. They last so long that I actually end up losing them before I use them. I lose them before I use them, bro. And you know what? You've held me up until this point, TR. Well, not really. It was about a month ago where I, I stopped seeing your uh, lighters in the rotation. But that was a great gift for me. And clearly, I lost half of them under a lot of mini seats, probably under my bed. Probably, I don't know, man. Definitely. And I think he deserves it, Joe. Jay Love already done been through the bullshit in this league that this league could offer. You know, he's already been through his own fan base talking about fuck Jordan Love, they ain't his quarterback. He's already been through 
the consensus, just all the national media halfway through the season. Oh, man, did the Packers make the wrong mistake? Is Jordan Love that guy? Now everybody seems to be the opposite. So happy to see that. Uh, well, TR, that's the way they've been doing it. You know, they've done that a few times, you know. But uh, like my boy just mentioned, uh, you know, it might be before training camp. With a quarterback, I just think you need to do it. Other guys, defensive players, diva wide receivers, you might have to make them wait a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I think Jay Love them been through enough as a Packer already that we don't need to put any extra pressure on him. He has enough pressure. He came out. He reacted. He did good. He made the mistakes that we needed him to make. I repeat. We made the stakes that he made the mistakes that we needed him to make. Right. And these mistakes have been talked about at exhaustion. But uh, let me go and get this bowl. I don't know. I got to get my weed. Oh, man. What's going on today? So I will uh, go ahead and pack it first before I go to the stove. That's a getaway, man. Lighting your shit on the stove, y'all. I ain't had to do that in a while, man. Thanks to TR. And that's cool. Um, you know, I think he should get that, you know. And if we are to do it, let's do it now, you know. Let's do it now. Packers have a great way of, like, underpaying people graciously underpaying people though like they'll underpay you but it'll still be a good deal you'd be like damn like i want him like just like Devonte. Devonte had him some good deals right you know because we kind of projected that he was the best receiver in the league before the actual league started saying it i was saying Devonte is the best long time ago arguing with my minnesota viking fan friends talking about some not only did this stupid motherfucker say that uh adam thielen was better than jordy nelson but he's better than Devonte. like Again, I know he's a Vikings fan. I couldn't let that get to me, but that motherfucker was serious. Like, come on, bro. Adam Thielen did have a decent, nice career, but he cannot hold a candle to White Lightning, bro. And motherfucking Devontae is better than both of them. But uh, all right, let me go and get. Let me go and use my stove to light this up, and I'll be back. <laughs> but th this will be a shorter stream. I got a lot of business to handle, y'all. But I just had to come through and, and highlight my folks. Watch us be on here for an hour. <coughs> we are back now. <coughs> Only thing we gonna have to keep this lit. We gonna have to keep this lit, y'all. Well, um, let's hope it breaks us. But follow me, Brandy. Let's hope it breaks us to the point that we will be broke, that we do have so many talented players that we are going to have to make a hard decision, right? Because I'm looking at this wide receiver room. You know, Jaden Reed might have been the darling last year because he's new, new shiny tool. Um, Romeo is probably the most stable out of them all. Let's just say Christian Watson just sets the world on fire this year. Like, eventually bro like we're gonna have to pay one of these receivers don't know who it is at this time and not even one we're gonna have to pay two you know so good problem to have but i think you know uh and i just don't feel that that uh goop could just have a dud of the draft this year in particular just because he is cooking the past three years have been very decent like you know draft for me used to be like especially with the packers like we ain't gonna see these motherfuckers for two three years right but that has changed in green bay dudes have come in rookies 
uh, guys who we didn't even think would probably make the roster or dude, just look at Zach Tom. You know, I know it's forced by injury, but look at Rasheed Walker, bro. That says that we drafted well, that we could lose a transcendent best left tackle in the game. The game has seen for the past, you know, him, Trent Williams, the other dude from Dallas. He's not with Dallas no more. He's with New York, Tyron Smith, right? But uh, Bakhtiari has always been looked at as one of them top. Bro, why did I get the same thing? I got the same thing as you, bro. Oh, and I forgot. So, hey, I forgot yesterday, but you're getting it now, Zane. So, you know, over on the Higher Point of View Gaming channel, me and my boy Zane Strong played the first Madden Ultimate Team game that we played against each other. First of all, they worked my whole team. I have Aaron Rodgers as my starter. 98, they made me have Jordan Love. Like, all kind of stuff happened that game. But the thing that happened that I really didn't understand, Zane's going to have to explain it to everybody. Normally, you know, we play Packers versus Packers, right? Zane was the Packers, but he wore the Seahawks jersey, you guys. I don't know. He's going to ask. I don't get it. He's going to have to answer the question himself. He's going to have to answer the question himself why he equipped his Packers team with a Seahawks jersey. And he wore the ugly highlighter green ones. I'm happy it wasn't the ones from 2014. But, hey, I don't know. You know, hopefully Zane is okay mentally. Because, you know, I, I'm never going to rock a Seahawks jersey. But, no, nah, shout out to my boy Zane Strong. We got it in. We had a good game, man. And, uh, you know, thank you for supporting me, bro. But, yeah, I won, I won the last game between me and Zane. You know, I come and report. So that's what happened. It was a tight one, though. Yeah, Brandy. So, you know, that's why let's strike while the iron is hot. Why you think Goot and it seems like everybody's changed their mindset on the speed of how fast we were going to get things accomplished. You see, they putting their foot on the gas right now. As Matt LaFleur says, all gas, no motherfucking break. OK, so, yeah, the turn that we see us doing, doing these free agency uh, acquisitions that might change how we draft somebody. We're trying to win the big deal, the big game, the Super Bowl. We're trying to win it within the next two to three years. That's why I see our window as being. Now it's going to be way longer because we're still going to have love. Other people are going to come. Other people are going to go. You know, more money is going to be available, all kind of stuff. Right. But. uh, Yeah, man, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be tricky. Shout out to my boy, David, man. And that's Niehoff. Yes. Hey, and you got to think, my boy, Joe, you got to think, right? Like, they, they that's what they're going to do. I mean, motherfuckers going to have to wait. You know, we can't just do it all at once. But I think we'll, you know, just like you said, uh, pay dubs this year. I think overall, even though I think Jaden Reed's upside may be better, you know, but I think Romeo is the most solid all around. He's available. He's, you know, I would say he should be first in line to get his little money. Christian Watson, we could kind of lowball. He's just going to be in that. We can kind of lowball him. You know, I don't think anybody's going to break the bank on Christian Watson. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's another team from the NFC North. You know how they do it. And we don't want to allow that to happen. So hopefully the hammy, everything is fine. And, um, you know, again, <laughs> if we get Christian Watson – we just don't know how many games this kid could play. Like, if we get him for a fucking 12 games, 14 games this season, like, I think you guys are going to see enough. Like, this dude's amazing. I mean, he's a very good player, man. Just, I really hope. And it's just so sorry. Now, you know, and let's be thankful, too. Hold up. Let's be thankful that at the time he did miss for a concussion at, at Buffalo, none of that stuff still existed, right? And let's be thankful he didn't really go out there and, and, and blow – uh, ACL, MCL, whatever. You know what I'm saying? He's dealing with soft tissue issues now. Still a lot of time is involved, but I don't think it's going to, you know, affect his 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 uh durability. Like, you know, I don't think it's taking years off his career. It's just taking games off his career, right? Like this soft tissue issue once fixed, you know, some people never fix it. Some people too fast for their own goddamn good. Look at Sammy the Hammy Watkins. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah, he took both of his hammies off and, and, and threw them dug a hole and put him inside a Lambeau field. Whoever should step on that, they get the problem. Stokes stepped on one of them. And then Watson stepped on the other one. 
So the, the ghost of Sammy the Hammy Watkins is still hunting us. Hopefully the great, great doctors at the University of Wisconsin, man. I mean, listen, they produce TR, okay? Hey, fuck all their other alumni. TR went to that goddamn college, so shout out to them, bro. And, I mean, you got to love the colors, too. That's what I'm saying, TR. I think they're taking a gamble, you know? And I think, you know, I doubt it's affecting them, right? Uh, you know, because people like to count. Oh, it's been, I don't even know the number. I don't even give a fuck. Oh, it's been this many years since we won a Super Bowl. To me, that shit was in 2010. That's not so long ago. So I'm just cool with that. But, you know, maybe it has been a while. You know, the draft is coming to town. You know, like, man. Man, the draft in Green Bay is going to be crazy. Number one, what if what if we won a Super Bowl this year? Very possible, you guys. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say, okay? Y'all seen what happened this year. Niners could have beat them, should have beat them. Detroit would not have would, have would not have had a problem going to an NFC Championship game to Detroit. Hopefully, they would have brought the turkey leg then because we would have beat them then. You know, sorry, Super Bowl champion Pat Mahomes, all this and that. Yes, but we beat them. You know, so like, I don't give a fuck. Like we are Super Bowl contenders at this point. You know, we are, you know? So uh, yeah, man, I, I think this is one of them deals. Kind of like the D train when we brought them in. It was like, we ready now, you know? Aaron is Aaron, you know, Devonta, you know? That was, so this seems like another one of those deals and I fucking agree, you know? Ain't no NFC team could really compete with us. Even every game we played this year, I don't even remember any blowouts. If anything, it was one possibly two that got out of hand and for a first year quarterback uh coach situation and and did all that like i hey we had a good year man i know i know i know look they could never be us bro they could never be us man yeah that's what i'm saying dave but again um you know i don't sense now again you know, they could flip out at any time, but I don't sense any divas. Like, even we got to appreciate Devontae to an extent because we did hit, we lowballed him a couple times. Like, we paid him some nice, some chunky. But when I was thinking, I'm like, that ain't top receiver money. It's other niggas who ain't on Devontae level that's getting paid more than him. So eventually, Devontae figured it out and he went for the bag, you know, and that, that's what happened. So, um, you know, but I don't feel we have any divas, you know, so. Hopefully these guys just hang on and understand the pecking order, understand the business. And, um, you know, yeah, but uh, obviously, see, look at what we're talking about, though. Fucking good problem to have, y'all. Good problem to have. Oh, man, we're going to have too many good receivers. Well, damn, that's good. So at least we cut a good one. Like, we still set. Like, so no matter what, y'all, we still set. Like, you know, fuck it. You know, at least, all right, damn, we didn't have enough. Like, Romeo saying, I don't care. I see Christian stand too. I, I see them all stand, but let's just say Christian blows up this year. Does what he does. Goes in a free agency. And then, um, you know, he gets the bag. At least we got a Romeo to replace him. We got Jaden Reed to replace him. We got a Bo Mel to replace him. So this is a uh, – don't think ill or bad about us at all talking about receivers who stand, who's going. This is the best problem to have. You got some teams who – can we get one receiver in that'll do good? We got some teams there. So let's really appreciate wide receiver you for the NFL, the Green Bay Packers. No, we don't need to draft wide receivers in the first round. Do we draft Devontae in the first round? No, he's considered one of the best receivers in the league. Actually, at one time, number one receiver in the league. Even Madden said it, okay? Donald Driver, first rounder, no. Nigga used to sleep in his car. Nigga was homeless. Came through and led the Packers. The day he retired was the leadingest, most, you know, receiver there. Jordy Nelson, first rounder, no. Motherfucking White Lightning. One of the best seasons ever. 1,500 some yards receiving back when it was 16 games. He had some crazy, like, 12, uh, 13, 14 touchdowns that year. All you remember is Jordy Nelson running up the sideline. Wide open, nobody around this motherfucker. Yeah, it's about that time, Brandon. You ain't the only one. You know, I'm being patient with it. And, you know, I just recognize the whole shit, like every team situation. 
And whenever it does get bad for us and motherfuckers is complaining and, and, and kicking trash cans and burning shit, doing whatever they do, that's when I come back and say, you know what? Yes, it is bad for Packers right now. We do want to win the Super Bowl. But when you look historically, like, can't nobody really – you can count on one hand, literally, of the teams who can compete with us. And I just feel that that, was a, that is a sweet spot that any NFL, NBA, whatever uh, fan will love. Man, you got some dudes, man. Again, imagine a Cleveland Browns fan, what that life is like. A Jets fan, what that life is like. Like, we know nothing about it. Packer fans can get a bit spoiled. You know? You damn right about that, Brandy. And yeah, you know, like, listen, if we know we probably won't be able to hold on to them anyway, fucking trade them for something else. You know? So, uh, you're right. You're right. And, uh, I, I'm not sure, but I mean, obviously, it may happen draft day, but I just think later in the line, you know, I, that is a possibility. Fuck it. Like, we already got other guys developing. He is a good player. He's going to get the bag. We just can't afford that right now. At least we can trade him, possibly get a pick out of it. Or, yeah, so, you know, that's ultimate GM mode there, though. So, hey, I'm glad I, you know, I ain't got to make those decisions. But, yeah, you, you're right about that. You're right, Brandon. Yeah, uh, yeah, but then let's let's really just sit down. You know, we fall in love with these players or whatever, but it is the best thing for business. Wouldn't you guys agree? And wouldn't you guys agree, as a business owner, don't you want to get rid of somebody a year before than a year late? Because a year before is like, hey, time you did have him, he was premium and he was getting a job done. But when it's a year late, you see the, you know, the, the declines and then he's like, he's actually hurting your business. You know, like, again, Kobe's the greatest to me, you know, he just got a place in my heart. Um, I forgot where I was going. It, it'll come back to me. I forgot where I was going. RIP to Kobe, though. David, no, no, no. David, David. I wouldn't be able to handle a Super Bowl loss. It's just too much build up. It's just too much. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So, no, when we go, we have to win. And we got to represent the NFC right. We can't do like the Niners. They done made it twice. You got nothing for it, bro. So I'd much rather lose all them. Hey, run all over us, Raheem Mostert in the NFC Championship. You're still going to lose. Hey, go ahead. Pick Jay Love off. Give him the photographic memory that's going to actually come back and kill you guys for years to come. But go ahead. Pick Jay Love off. Go to Super Bowl again and lose. So hey, I'd much rather be in our spot than the Niners spot. You know what I'm saying? But at those times... We were getting beaten the playoffs by the Niners going to NFC Championships where we really could not compete with them. Only edge we had over them was Aaron Rodgers, and he just, hey, couldn't figure it out. Yeah, man, and again, like, let's just be happy that it is hard decisions for us to get rid of people. Why? Because they're good. You know how many teams just release motherfuckers with no problems? Like, we suck. We've always sucked. We don't know what good is. We'll just let you go. Us, we let go people who's like, ah, we let him go. Why? Because he's so good. But him being so good had to do with the tradition of the team, had to do with the way we draft and develop, had to do with the coaching. You know, coaching this year, you guys are going to see a big difference. Some motherfuckers think coaches are just some old ass, probably has men players or whatever they did on the sideline. Like, bro, coaches, like, again, rest in peace, Robert Taylor, uh, Santa Monica College historic coach, Coach Steve Smith. Coach Chad Johnson, Coach uh, Isaac Bruce, I want to say, and Coach myself, uh, amongst other people. Rest in peace. Like, bro, y'all going to see this year, bro. Y'all going to see this year of how big a difference coach is, coaching makes. And then it's like people just, oh, Joe Barry and Halfley. It's not just that. Joe Barry wasn't just replaced with Halfley because we got some underbosses that's hard as fuck. You know, the final boss is, is Matt LaFleur, but you got Halfley under him. And coach, oh, I'm telling you, defense alignment coach, y'all going to see him. <laughs> y'all going to see him. You know, hey, shout out to Montgomery, bro. Hey, L.A. dude, whatever, Packer D-line coach for a long time, developed Penny, just really, you know, hey, good coach. But, uh, you know, the time has just come, bro. We got Coach O now. We got Coach Campanile, Lineber Lineber linebacker extraordinaire, you know what I'm saying, and Halfley. What's his main quote? The ball travels through the air faster than the ground. Bro, he's a defensive back specialist. Any job he's ever had in his life, 
He was something with defensive backs until he became defensive coordinator, until he became head coach. So this guy specializes in defensive backs, an issue that we've had. You don't think that he can fix these issues that Keyshawn has learning in his first year. And it's not about just about learning in your first year. It's about the teacher. I know some teachers who I love them because when I went in that class, they just made it. They related it to a way like he would always use examples from real life stuff to do with numbers. Like, again, it was mad. But, you know, I love, you know, oh, if Johnny has eight apples and you take three. I know it's just eight minus three, but as a kid, that shit really made me interested because, you know, they have the colorful animations and apples and all that. Like, I think, you know, there's more than one way to teach. You got some motherfuckers who can't read music, but can go on the computer and play computer on a piano and play whatever the hell you want. Anyway, I'm rambling. Yeah, no, me too. Again, like, you know, I kind of fall and again, I rather fall as a just a over enthusiastic Packer fan. But, you know, ask me every draft. But again, he has really been hitting since I've been a YouTuber like good has really been hitting. If we did ever get a draft pick and I really wasn't feeling it, I will let you guys know. So I know all my draft coverage over the years of the players we get. And then, of course, be on the lookout. I don't know if I'll do it in solid video form or in wake and pack form. But, uh, you know, we will go over every player we draft. And if you look at my past draft outlooks of Dubs, Reed, just everybody, you would think like, damn, the Packers are going to have so many good players. And we fucking do. These same dudes who I was so crazy about in the draft, they coming out there doing shit. So, again, I don't just think Goot's going to stop cooking. And if he does, he might miss one or two. But, like, Goot has been on fire for the past three years, you guys. To the bump, to the point we're developing faster than we thought. That's how good our our scouting and whatever has been. Zach Tom, are you fucking kidding me? Rasheed Walker, are you kidding me? Like even Elton, man, Elton, fucking great pick, bro. Best guard in the league, bro. And he can play tackle and center, physical. Aaron Donald couldn't handle him. That's one dude that Aaron Donald could say he's one I couldn't get. Aaron Donald done punked everybody, right? He tried to punk Elton, and Elton stood on his Mississippi shit. Hey, man, you know, motherfuckers are joking, laughing. Ha, <laughs> ha, no, that's too much, Zane. You got damn right. Let's do it. Why not? Let's do it. Hey, until we don't do it, motherfuckers can't say we didn't do it. So, hey, we shouting it right now. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. And not only that, Joe, the Niners are going to go on a big decline, bro. Because, again, how many year after year after year after year can you do it? You know, their window has been open probably a little longer. How many defensive coordinators are you going to lose that's going to go be head coaches without a Super Bowl? You know what I'm saying? How many free agency acquisitions Christian McCaffrey or trade, you know, Christian McCaffrey, Chase Young didn't work out. They went and got Hargrave. Like, all this willing and dealing y'all doing. Getting the new regime in there, you know, with the John Lynch and all that. Like, you know, how many more years y'all gonna have to do that? Y'all gonna have to pay Brock Purdy pretty soon, too. So, like, you know, they're gonna decline and take a two, three year break while they get their shit together, which is where we're supposed to be. Right now, we're supposed to be on our two, three year break where we're getting our shit together, which I was fully preparing for. And I thought it would be a two year break. But we fucking did it in the first year. That's what put the shifts in gear for Goot to say, you know what? Fuck that. Let's let's go for it now. Especially looking at the competition. I ain't scared of Seattle. I ain't scared of Detroit. I ain't scared of what? Like, come on. Who else is out there? The Niners are really the big bully on the block. The Niners are Debo right now, you know? And we're going to have to be Craig, bro. We're going to knock that ass out, bro. And take his girl. You feel me? Yeah, I get really invested in them to him, uh, into him, but hey, that's one of the reasons I don't buy jerseys, you know? I just don't buy them, you know? Unless it's a legend, you know, and just a Hall of you know, that kind of deal. You feel me? Or, you know, all Pla Packer players are legends, right? But, you know, yeah, that's why I don't buy jerseys. But, uh, you know, I just like to wear Packer shirts and just gear, shit like that, just with the G on it. You already know what I'm representing because, you know, just like Devontae. I mean, still, you know, I wish him the best, but it's like, you know, my homie, man, Packer man. He, the year Devont, like the year before Devontae got traded, he was happy. He was like, you know, we, he buy a jersey every year. He was like, I'm getting that Devontae this year. I'm like, cool. He got the crispy white. And then as soon as he bought it, the next year he's like, damn, that jersey didn't last long. I'm like, yeah, I know it happens. So, hey, 
And uh, a play of names, Rogers. Shout out to Amari Rogers, you guys. Um, he caught his first touchdown in the USFL or wherever the fuck is out there right now. I'm not watching it. Let me know if y'all watching that shit. I don't even know any teams' names. I don't even know if LA has a team with the USFL, XFL merger, but Amari Rogers, former Packer. I mean, good to just see that he's still playing football and still haven't given up on it. And I just think he was a player that was misused. So for him to go out there catching touchdowns for his team, bro, hopefully he gets another shot at another roster, just not ours. Let him go to the Bears or some shit. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you so you know about that JC deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, I did a little Santa Monica, I did a little West LA. Yeah, again, love him to death. Love the complicated fella to death. But just even these new little news stories of him becoming a would be, like nothing in stone. And he just doesn't have the time of day to do it right now. He would have to retire. But him to be a would be vice president, you know, everybody was gonna come to us trying to make fun of us and laugh at us for shit like that. Everybody wants to come and laugh at us with shit about Rogers, except for shit that's on the field. Now, you know, they got a little playoff kind of argument that they could come up with, like Rogers playoff record, whatever. But again, we did make it to the promised land and we made the bowl. But I'm just so happy none of this excess stupid ass media is invading 1265 of people who really don't give a fuck about the organization or the team. But whenever there's a clickbait, funny kind of he ha ha to laugh at us. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, you know. Most of the fans I get in arguments, men's with, I'm talking about numbers. They talk about some, oh, let's tell Aaron Rodgers, go do his DMT. Tell him to go do his ayahuasca. Like, okay, it's a funny joke, but you're not talking about what's going on on the field, Bears fan. You're not, what's, you're not talking about what's going on on the field, Vikings fan. You know what I'm saying? You know, they always make jokes about us like that. So that's why I'm glad we got a cool dude that's about to be old spicing it up. Shit, I might go get me some old spice today, man. We will be seeing old spice commercials with J-Love in it. You already seen the love train of events he's done done like he's getting he's done been on interviews to where I can't even count anymore. I got to catch up on these interviews, but that shows the world is starting to see it. So for now on, he is Michael Jordan love. That was supposed to be his name anyway. Oh, I love Brooks. Hey, that's what I'm saying. And these, hey, Joe. Joe, these are dudes you name and that nobody knows about. I mean, we know about him, but but ask ask you know any other casual fan about Brooks. Huh? Who is that? Ask somebody about Valentine. Huh? Who is that? Yeah, you, they'll know him a little more next year. They definitely will know him a little more next year. Coach, oh, I'm telling y'all, defensive line coach, he's gonna look at Carl Brooks like, damn, what where y'all get him from? I guarantee it. I guarantee it. it's gonna be a whole new philosophy on defense, bro. Attacking defense. We're gonna be moving around, man. I'm not going to say is closed, Joe, but it is closing. And our window opening and their window still being open is probably going to be for another two years. This year and next year, they should be competitive enough, competitive enough and just vets enough. Even if they lose players, they should have enough vets on the team to be competing with us for the next two years. But after that, we got more stand power, you know. And this might be it for them, though. Again, I don't know if Shanahan could even – muster or take another meltdown like that hey we don't know you know what i'm saying but hey ask me this you know would the niners still be a playoff team if sean clifford was over there i would say yes again that's more of a system thing respect to brock purdy respect to him but they ain't won no games because he done went ballistic you know he ain't out there throwing the kind of throws that love my homes like i love how i could add jay love to that to that mix you know, and a couple of other people. Tua does some freaky shit. You know, he he can he can he can toss that thing around a little bit. Yeah, and deeper, right? The deepness is better. Now, the front guys, you know, the 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 guys who are all starting as Packers for the past ten whatever years, we can pick out our players. Oh, Jair, Devontae, you know, our star players, guys who get it done, but uh you know, now we are solid in the fact that we got solid backups, you know. Rudy Ford, backup, but solid, you know. Rudy Ford has an afterthought, backup, uh, guarantee he's going to be in there making plays. They're going to actually attack Rudy Ford because he's going to be the weakest link, and Rudy's going to take care of that. Led the team in interceptions last year, you feel me? And he's going to be under co better coaching.
But David, we actually have a chance though. They don't, bro. They really don't. Their only chance was really this year. And they wouldn't have beat the Niners. So again, they are delusional. You know, but they they are delusional, David, because it's been since 95, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's more delusion than we could ever imagine. Yeah, we did it 2010. That is still relatively like, you know, we all seen it with our eyes, right? Like that is still, I would say that wasn't that long ago, you know, and all of us who had the fortune to see it in 97, I was a little pup then, but you know, I was excited to see it. You know what I'm saying? I thought like, you know, that what made me love the Packers is how I was introduced to them, right? I introduced all, all the win. I was like, damn, I'm so glad I picked this as my team. Then, you know, we start losing for a while and just every year I just come right back. You know, even some years after, you know, Favre and threw that shit against the Giants and just a couple other ones. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, you know, I'm like, man, how much longer I'm going to be able to watch this shit? And then, you know, I say, no, you know, every year I just, you know, and even up until now, that's why I love them so much, bro. I don't give a fuck who playing for the team, bro. I'm a Packer fan, man. So, you know, we're going to wish everybody the best. But, uh, yeah, I told y'all I got a split, man. We still winning. We chopped it up for a little bit, but I got to get up out of here, y'all. Busy day for me today. Um. Um, gaming channel, I'm going to stream at some point, you know, I wish I could have a schedule, but it's like different times every day. Cause I'll be all over the place, but, uh, let me get the hell up out of here, man. Oh my God. Didn't they, it wasn't a better run. It was a better, like you couldn't have made a better run than that year. Underdogs each time around beat the Eagles and Vic where they was really hot. Beat a team Atlanta who previously had our number a couple times before and going into that dome, I was just like, it's going to be a rough one. But Tremont Williams helped us with that one. Right. And then we go to Bears NFC championship. Like I knew we would win, but I was just like, damn, it's that soldier field. Them dudes going to be going crazy. Fourth and two or third and two big copy. Randall Cobb, you know, touchdown in the end zone, man. That was just one of the, my favorite plays ever. That one and the other one against the Bears. Randall Cobb is the Bear killer. Remember Monday night when we was down 20 to 0 something? Khalil Mack first game, Rodgers limps off or whatever. That Cobb play to win the game. Oh, boy. Just, hey, I could have, hey, I was like, kill me now. I ain't even got to live no more at that point. That shit was amazing. Geronimo Allison called a great catch that game, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, Josh Jacobs had something similar, a little close, but no, it wasn't. Like, it wasn't nothing like that. But uh, yeah, no, nah, that kind of shit. You know, at that point, like I'm a smart man. I would look at my body as an investment. I wouldn't be doing. I don't even do that kind of dumb shit now. You couldn't find me on a motorcycle. I would do a jet ski because you know, you know, I'm a fish. But other than that, I'm not. I'm not doing no shit like that. You feel me? Even with the cars, you know, that could drive themselves. I do it for a little bit, but I just get. I cannot sit there and let the car drive itself. I hurry up and just, all right, that's enough fun, you know. Oh, I didn't know he fled, Brandy. That makes it even worse. No, that's, that, that makes it even worse. I did not know he fled. And dude was, like, becoming, like, Probably wide receiver one for the Chiefs at some point. Like, come on, you can't fuck up your own bag like that, man. These kids got to learn, bro. I know, you know, you, you want to still live life like a normal person your age and do shit. But, bro, you got to understand you are different. You're investment. Do that shit when you retire. Have a thrill when you retire. Eat. Hell, retire early. You know, retire early where you still fit enough to do all that kind of shit and do it then. OK, but yeah, you're supposed to be an investment. But, yeah, I'm out of here, man. Shout out to my boy Dave, man. Brandy, my favorite. If I forgot about you, I didn't forget about you. Shout out to the homie Zane Strong for sure. I'll catch you later on or whenever you already know. Shout out to big homie TR coming through. My boy Joe coming in. Hey, my, my boy Joe, man, being, being consistent, man. I, I appreciate your support and coming through this chat, bro. You know, you're in the family now. You're in the family now. You already know. Uh, David, hey, that's Niehoff, y'all. It's Niehoff for y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, um. Uh, Again, if I forgot about you, I didn't forget about you. Shout out to Ernie Martinez. Shout out to John Bain and shout out to Milto. Hey, hit the like button, everybody, if you didn't. And uh, I'll highlight y'all tomorrow.